to their great credibility. Order, Gareth Hughes. Uh, uh, kia ora, Mr. Speaker, and uh, mihi nui kia koutou. Kia ora. I want to touch on the theme raised by my colleague Dr. Russell Norman on the extreme anti environment ideology we're seeing from the National Party this term in government. And I want to look at just one example, which is the Ross Sea, because here we have environmental bandits and cabinet literally uh, acting not in our interest actively damaging our economic interest, our environmental interest, our community interest, and what we know is they say they care about the environment, like the Ross Sea, but what we know is the way they're acting, the way they're acting like environmental bandits is akin to a hypocritical fashion. Mr Speaker, the Ross Sea, or the last ocean as it's known, is the last intact marine ecosystem left on Earth. This beautiful wild place, described by the journal Science, as the least uh, impacted by human hand place on the planet. Unlike most places on the planet, the top predator is still there. This is the last ocean because it's the last place where man's impact is being felt, but it's also the last place we're going on our relentless push to catch more fish. But we've got an opportunity to change it, to protect it, because right now in Hobart, Kamla is meeting to discuss how we protect all the waters in Antarctica, but this for New Zealand, this most precious part, what's been described as the last ocean. What we have, however, is after more than a year of negotiations on a joint proposal with the United States government, we see those bandits in Cabinet urging the Foreign Minister to walk out of the joint US proposal, and now New Zealand has tabled its own proposal, a proposal which McCulley has literally drawn a line around the main fishing grounds and created a marine reserve only on paper. A marine reserve where the areas where we don't impact, where we don't exploit, are entirely left uh, within the marine reserve, but those areas where we do exploit are left out. It looks big on paper, it's a paper sanctuary, but it lacks what it lacks in effectiveness, it makes up and compensates in size. Basically what we see is those bandits in cabinet protecting the fishing interests not protecting this pristine, beautiful place, the last ocean. Basically what we see is the government swallowing hook, line and sinker, the spin we see from the fishing industry. Because what we know is we're protecting very narrow fishing interests, a handful of fishing boats, many, uh, some contracted to other nations. We're talking about 0.17% or a fifth of 1% is the catch landed in the Ross Sea by New Zealand boats compared to our larger catch. We're talking about around 1% of our fisheries exports. But what we're doing is we're damaging our brand by looking out for protecting these narrow fishing interests. We're actually letting down all of our fishing exports. Mr Young, we're letting down all 1.5 billion of our fishing exports because we know already US supermarkets like Safeways are boycotting New Zealand caught Ross Sea toothfish. It's bizarre that we would even walk out of a joint US proposal. I thought this government would want to go to Kamla with a joint New Zealand proposal. It's one of our aims to work closer with the United States government if you look at the government's spin. What we know is we're also damaging the chance of an outcome. Now we've got three proposals on the table. The New Zealand weak one, the US proposal and also the Better Antarctic Ocean Alliance. But I want to clear one thing up Mr Speaker. What we know is not the extremism we hear from members like Shane Jones. None of those three proposals are going to ban fishing. None of those three proposals are reducing the toothfish quota. The fact is, New Zealand once, once upon a time, was a world leader in protecting the continent, the land and the ice of Antarctica, but we're failing to protect our oceans. The government describes it as a well-managed fishery. Well, it might be in comparison to our poorly managed fisheries around New Zealand waters or what we see in other countries. But the fact is we still know so little about this toothfish, which we want to remove an entire 50% of its population. We still haven't found a toothfish egg larva or under four-year-old juvenile. This place is covered under ice for nine months of the year. We just don't have accurate information to make these decisions. But we've got to ask ourselves, why are we going to the ends of the world to catch the fish? What happened to the rest of the fish that was in all the world's oceans? And the fact is, we've eaten them. We've eaten the fish and now we have to go right to the limits of endurance technology, to the frontiers of the world, to the last ocean. The government says we're down there to protect it from pirates. The same argument was used in England in the age of the slavery debates that they should keep participating in an uh, improper practice to help somewhat improve the standards. If that was the argument, why aren't we going to Somalia? The fact is, if we were going to reduce piracy, the best way we could do it is having no fishing boats down there so we would know where the fishermen 
Ah, the fact is Labour doesn't have position. They've only got slogans. The government's out there protecting fishing interests. We can protect the last ocean. To Ralph Lovell.